Almost in three years since President Akufuado promised the Agenda 111 hospitals, a number of the projects are yet to take off with the land for some bare and contractors not on site. A number of these contractors have all been paid more than a million dollars but have failed to show up to work. Ranking member on the health committee, Kwabna Minta Kando, says this is because government and party officials have gone to take the money from the contractors. These people have been given the money and behind the scene, the MPP gurus themselves have gone to take the money. And so if you push the, the contractor, he cannot come to side because you yourself, you've taken the money from the contractor and you cannot do anything to the co contractor because you have taken the money. So where is the money to take sight? So you may not have the moral right to even put pressure on the contractor to go to site. Okay? And there are even people who are also on site, but if you look at the magnitude of work eh, and you correspond it to the amount of money that has been given to them, I mean, it's not tallying. He insists government must show commitment and do as it has promised. Let me sound this morning that it's not as though we are doing a nine-day wonder, that we have been here and then they will discuss the issues in the media and that is all. We will come back. So we are calling on the powers that be that the contractors must report to site immediately. In the Bue municipality of the OT region, the promised facility is yet to take off and the chief of the area is complaining about the politicization of the project. Bibia omo di adani politics. Nanso enye bibia na se eye politics. Se bi ye wo mpenyinfo. Ah se bi kafra ya titi won won fie. Nanso enne akoye se se wo ma be ye miensa na wa yi be ye mienu a ope omo asem. Enu na ye yen gya sikan fo problem a ye wo. Yen bibia adani politics. Wo ko other places. Se mi mbodi a KJB haya, kwa bibi omwa ye omwa juma aso. Yendiye, de wea e hote no, saa neti. E juma iso omu kase one year. Na nko omwa timi, nko omwa timi adru bebi. Nansu, eh, ase yendiye, yama yen ka gana fo hon. Wa hon, mimi ti wa minye politiso. Na mo mo se mi mo se o ya di pa na mi yere mi bo wa basu mesere mo mo sorry ha mo be ko na mo ko she e juma agenda wan wa no mo ko she ade a e wo e ho e ha yen pa nya ma bebere wo ho ai ha yen yo mp for the constituency kufi adam says his people are angry about the situation this can be 1.2 million dollar advance payment in after a year Something seriously must be done, and my people are really angry. If you speak to the chiefs and the elders, they will tell you they are really, really, really angry, and they feel being let down. The promises are becoming too many. The story on Agenda 111 is quite similar for all the sites we have visited so far. We've been to the Ashanti region, the Eastern region, and now here at Damfa, here in the Greater Accra region, the Medina constituency. This is the land earmarked for the Agenda 11 Hospital for Damfa and its environs. So far, about $1.3 million has been paid to the contractor, including Micheletti, the contractors, three of them, including Micheletti, to mobilize and come to site. But no work has been done so far. Unlike even other sites where some excavations had been made, there is no such thing here. Indeed, you can still see some plantation, which presupposes that some farmers are still cultivating the land contrary to government plan to use this for agenda 111 and having advanced some form of money to the contractors close to a year ago we understand payments of about 1.3 million dollars were made in march of 2022 but no work has been done so far and so all the sites you have visited so far were the minority on the health committee in the case that government needs to do a little bit more to supervise and monitor the agenda 111 hospitals which it seeks to help deal with healthcare in the country with so many sites laying bare, with so many sites having no work being done on contractors, not on site, government's timeline of 2024 will completely be a mirage. And also, the idea that by 2027, much of it would have been completed will not come to pass. Reporting for Joy News, Kwiku Asante, 
Danfa, Accra. And that's my colleague Kwekwa Asante reporting there on Agenda 111. What's the status? How far have we come? What is left to do? And what is the reality of the promise that has been made by government? Uh, this morning we'll be talking about that. We'll also take a look at COVID-19 spending, the expenditure, and what we can expect from there. But the first issue we'll be tackling, and I just shared this with our guests briefly, will be the state of the National Democratic Congress in respect of what we've seen uh, recently in Parliament. Joining us for that conversation, Kwabena Menta Akando, a member of Parliament for Jua Bosso, ranking member on Parliament's Health Committee. I always, that, that's, that, that place me, I always struggle with it. I don't know. Uh, Honourable, since you're here, can you give me the proper pronunciation? It's Jua Bosso. Jua. Jua Bosso. Jua Bosso. Just relax and pronounce it. Uh, so I was close, eh? <laughs> you were close, but you were struggling. Jua, Jua Boso. Boso. Uh, one Jua. of the most Boso. important districts okay. and constituencies in, the, in, in this country. Very, mm. very important. What's, what's the state of Jua Boso, uh, as of now? If you, you know, usually when you go to constituencies, you would see myriad problems from health to infrastructure to... What, what is the state of your constituency? Yeah. What are some of the developments there that you can speak of? Very it's a, briefly on. It's a, it's a rural constituency. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, we've done something about access to education, but there's still a long way to go. Mm. We, we did so much about rural electrification, but there are some places about 15 to 20 percent of the communities without electricity. Um, there's issues about water, portable drinking water. So. Any problem you can associate with rural constituency or rural communities in this country, you can find some there. But the major occupation in the area is cocoa farming. But unfortunately, um, the cocoa industry is on its, on its knees. I mean, it's gone. How so? Um, if you go to my area, the production has dropped, dropped more than 60%, the production of cocoa, because this government... So, so within what period because from, if you say it could be that you are talking about 2000 to no no from if you check if you so check the data if you check the data between 2017 downwards it's always declining all the time it's declining and declining so it's dropped over in my area for example it's dropped over 60 percent you know there were some incentives that the former or the, uh, regime was 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 given to the farmers for example free fertilizer and what have you, access to chemicals to spray their farms. And there are a lot of diseases attacking the cocoa. They have come to cut the cocoa down for almost two to, two to three years, and they are not coming to replant and all that. So there are a series of challenges in the sector. Mm. So yeah, and then the general hardship in the system. We but really in, in terms of the fall, you, you mentioned that there were things that the previous administration yeah. uh, was doing yeah. that are no longer being done. So. What do you attribute this to? If you make it a, a blanket statement that from 2017, it's been tapering off. Do you know why? Do you know what is causing? You know, this? we have a whole unit, Ghana Cocoa Board, mm -hmm. which is responsible for everything cocoa. In fact, previously, Ghana Cocoa Board was under the Ministry of Finance. And under this regime, it was moved to Ministry of Agri. So there cannot be any system or any sector in this country without problems or challenges. Mm -hmm. So the problems and the challenges cannot be the excuse. Right. You understand? So that is why there's the need for you to look for the solutions. Because don't forget that the cocoa has been the backbone of the economy for a very long time. You remember those days when there's cocoa money in the system, irrespective of the fact that you are a farmer, you still enjoy cocoa money. Mm -hmm. it, it is not like that today. So as for the challenges, yes, some of them technical, but my point is that we have a whole unit. If the syndicator loan is coming, you, 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 you remember the kind of uh, pomp and pageantry it comes with that, oh, the, the city is going to gain strength and all that. But it all comes at the back of the production of cocoa. But unfortunately, the sector is cooler. As I speak to you now, I know a single cocoa license buying company that the cocoa board owes more than 400 million Ghana cities. Just one. Just one. And I'm saying that on authority. I know what I'm talking about. Just one company. P uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Ghana Cocoa Board owes more than 400 million Ghana cities. Wait, uh, they, they produce cocoa? They, they no, they buy. They you know, they're they buy. So when right. they buy, 
Cocoa Board must pay them because Cocoa Board is the marketing uh, 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 board for our cocoa. So no individual transports cocoa outside the country without going through Cocoa Board. You understand? It's so they are owing right. exactly. So as I speak to you now and take it from me, I share boundary with La Côte d'Ivoire in my constituency. Cocoa that we produce in Ghana because of price differential is going to La Côte d'Ivoire because our cocoa companies do not have the money to buy it. I'm telling you. Yes, that is what it is. That is a reality on the ground. So you basically, are very careful. We'll discuss cocoa and true agenda. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's an important. I mean, cocoa is cocoa. I know, is I know. Agriculture. And that's where I come from. Yeah, I am a cocoa farmer myself. I am a commercial rice farmer. So if it goes, in, if you go into the agri sector, I know what I'm talking about. And you see, the painful aspect is that they are always quick to come and react with, to issues without tackling the realities on the ground. That's my pain. That's my pain. Now the cocoa farmers are living in poverty, I am telling you. Uh, Everybody is running away from cocoa to do other crops. People are running away, giving their lands to people to do galamsey and what have you. Uh, a colleague of mine, Samuel Kojobreis, recently was in the western region, Bordier to Asankwagwa and those places, and he reported similar cases, Sorry. but for them, more, more, more importantly, the deplorable state of roads, of which course, would also yeah. mean that Carting cocoa products, and they are some of the biggest cocoa producing yeah. areas in the yeah. country. Carting those yeah. to uh, the, the central areas in Accra and all of that yeah. is problematic. And that's another thing I think we can do yeah. open yeah. up so that it doesn't necessarily have to come to Accra and all of that. We can deal with them. But, but having made that point, um, as Member of Parliament for this constituency, what, what have you done in, in, in this respect? Because you, you say you know people yeah. are smuggling yeah. our cocoa. It's, what it's, have you done? You're a member of parliament. You, if you're a member of parliament, there are, I mean, some, um, what do you call it, tools available at your disposal. Although I am the ranking on health, but I file more questions on the floor of the house in respect to agriculture more than even health. So you file a question. And the unfortunate aspect of filing a question is that when the minister brings the, the answer, it is not supposed to provoke debate. That's the unfortunate aspect of questions. So you file questions, they will come and answer. We take the press to the grounds all the time to see it for themselves. Mm. So at the end of the day, though you, re you as a member of parliament, your responsibility is to raise the issues as I'm doing on your platform. But at the end of the day, because you're not a keeper of the public pets, you cannot have money to go and fix the issues or the challenges. Right. Unless, of course, issues that has to do with your common fund, the fund that is available to us. And of course, those ones, we've built a number of chips compounds in the consistency. If you go to Adekrum, there's a chip compound there. Shremihan, there's a chip compound there. Kantamantu, we are building one. KFAS, we are building three unit classroom. Africa, there's a village on the border. Africa, I'm building one chip compound. These are funds available to the member of parliament. It's not a central government project. Right. Because my constituency, I've, I've told you, my constituency, it's a rural consistency. These are emergency funds that people use to buy pens, books, um, what do you call it, computers, and dash. But because I know the needs of my people, I have to use these funds for capital expenditure. So if you come to my constituency as I speak to you and they are listening, I have built a whole um, uh, assembly hall complex in the secondary school with a member of Parliament's Common Fund. Now we have a robotic center at Jaboso. I mean, ICT center, robotics and ICT center in Jabos at the moment. I mean, some NGOs came to assist me. We put up the structure, they brought the computers and what have you. So things that I am supposed to do, but you know that I have limitations when it comes to funding. And so the things that I have to do in my own small way, that one, why not? And we are always also projecting the consistency, raising the issues. But I know one day, one day, I may get a bigger opportunity than I have today to fix those challenges. Uh, very quickly, your common fund, uh, how, how much do you get? Well, it depends. So, for example, we have the national, the, the MP share of the national. And maybe you could fund. add uh, when when the last time was that. Have you got the latest tranche? No, no, it's always in arrears. So it depends. Sometimes it comes as in a quarter for the common fund. It comes as I mean, high as sixty thousand per quarter. It, it it depends. A formula, and then we have what you call the national health insurance, the MP share of the national health insurance fund. Sometimes eighty thousand per a whole year. So if you're a member of parliament, and almost all the time, the final year, the fourth year, doesn't even come before you leave office. Mm. You understand? And then the get fund. So these are the projects 
I mean, the monies you put together and try to do some of these projects for the people. Because you cannot, so you see, constituencies, um, issues are constituency specific. Mm. If somebody is in Bantama or Accra and he is buying computer for people, I cannot be in Jabos and be buying computers for people while the people are studying under tree. I get, I get the point you're making. You so, understand. So, so basically, between you'll be making between 240 to 320,000 Ghana cities in the common fund and using it on projects. Yes. If you are using 60,000, that's 240. Yes, if you're using 80,000, yeah. that's about 320. Yeah. And that's all you have available. That's all. For your the, the, the sources I have, yes, the sources I have mentioned is all we have as a how, how big is your constituency in terms of population? Well, the voter population, well, the, the entire population will be about um, 100,000. 100,000. Yes. Wow. Anyway, uh, thanks for giving us that insight. Before we get into those two crucial issues of um, COVID-19 expenditure, and of course tied to that agenda 111, very quickly in some two minutes, when you look at the state of the NDC now, uh, some people say your camp is in disarray. And disarray? Yes, disarray. What does that mean? Uh, your leadership, you, you almost have a duplicate leadership. Do you... Do you I mean, you have Dr. Kasiola Tufosin and his team, Onoboboa, among others. You also have Haruna Idrisu and others. There are split, you know, factions here and there. Kleta Zavoka came in initially, had to retract, apologized to Dr. Kasiola Tufosin. There was a so-called petition. I mean, what, what is your reaction to all of that? And where do you find yourself <laughs> in terms of... Uh, what point. has come to the What floor. is very important is that none of these issues is preventing any of us from doing our work. It hasn't prevented me from embarking on the inspection of the agenda on one side. Mm. It hasn't prevented Okujato from, I mean, unveiling all that he has. G on Ghanaian the say the, these, it hasn't, these, so you see, this so tango our, is our, making our, 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 our caucus is never in disarray. We are clear in our mind what we are doing and what we want to do. These are changes that the leadership of the party is bringing. And of course, as human beings, you always respond whether negative or positive to changes, okay? So these are internal matters. And of course, the members of Council of State have written, they've issued a press statement that we should go, you should hasten slowly on these matters. And for me, it is nothing to worry about. I think that will come out stronger. And uh, this issue will be a thing of the past. I mean, as for changes, you yourself, even when you are relocating, you have challenges, don't you? So for me, it's, an, it's, it's a non-issue. The, the, the so real you're, issue... You are in support of the relocation. The real, are you in support of the reshuffle? Well, whether I am in support or I am not I mean, in support, I mean, this is not... All, all of you issue. seem to be skirting the issue. Are you in support of it no, or not? But you see, the reality is that, let's face it, mm -hmm. I have worked with the, 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 uh, the Haruna-led I mean, uh, group. I have worked with them. I am very conversant with them. I love it. Haruna is a fantastic... Minority leader, all the leaders, um, uh, Mutaka is a bold, courageous leader and all that. I've worked with them. And there's nobody in the new announcement that I don't know. Fantastic at forcing. Um, Kwame Abuja, he will always be on the, the first person to come to the floor of the house. These are gentlemen, I mean, we have worked with. Sometimes, even in the health sector, when there are issues of funds, the management of funds or financial issues, I ran to Atu Fosin to explain those things to me to understand before I go to committee meetings. We consult each other. You understand? Look, Kwame Boja is an architect. When it comes to infrastructure, all these agenda one one issues, sometimes I invite him to my office and he responds. So there is no issue. Absolutely no issue. Mm. But I think that, yes, if changes are coming, you obviously expect some kind of reactions and take it for me at the end of the day, whether the former or the current, you are going to come out strongly, I mean, very strong, and then um, deal with the issue, the real challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, now our debt is around 575 billion Ghana cities. And as we are going to discuss, you have pumped not less than 21.8 billion Ghana cities into the economy in the past two years. And after pumping 21 billion in an economy in the two years, we are where we are, and we are still blaming that thing that brought you 21.8 billion, that it is the cause of your financial difficulty. This You're talking of COVID-19. Exactly. Right. Can you imagine? We'll get into the details of that. So let's start the conversation with Agenda 111. And you've been out and about. You saw my colleague um, 
Kweku Asante also on, on the field in Damfa and other places reporting from there. We all know that in, sometime in 2021, the president, His Excellency Danado Dankwe Kufuado, launched the project. It was set to cover the design, procurement, construction, equipping of, and commissioning of 101 district hospitals, six regional hospitals in newly, uh, the newly created regions, as well as one regional hospital in the western region, two psychiatric hospitals in Kumasi and Tamale, and a redeveloped Accra psychiatric hospital, which has had problems for a long time. What would you say is the status of Agenda 111 as we speak? Akako, it's very, very sad, to say the least. You know, we have an infrastructure, health infrastructure deficit in our country. And so the former regime made a frantic effort to put not less than 60,000 bed capacity to the already existing one. So that is why today we have the University of Ghana Medical Center. We have the Dodoa District Hospital. We have the Rage Hospital. We have the Tepa Hospital. We have the Sewia Hospital. We have the Kumewu Hospital. We have the Formina Hospital, now, all these hospitals. And I agree that the governance is continuing. But unfortunately, as I speak to you now, the projects that they inherited, this government inherited, six, seven years down the lane, some of the projects were 60% complete, 80% complete. Akako, mm -hmm. as I speak to you now, we haven't completed those projects. In any reasonable governance, in any serious jurisdiction, we'll be thinking about completing those projects before even move, moving forward. Because don't forget that we've gone for some loan facilities and we are paying interest on those facilities whilst those facilities are not being put to good use mm. to start with. Now, so any attempt by any government to add on to the health infrastructure, I am totally for it. Right. Now, let me take you back a bit. In the year 2020, mm -hmm. in one of the addresses of the president, I mean, President uh, Nadu, he promised the good people of this country that he was going to build 88 district hospitals, if you recall. Mm. 88. That was that initial one before the... the exactly. Yeah. 88 district hospitals. And that, he gave us a timeline that at the end of 2020, he was going to complete the 88 hospitals. Now, at the end of 2020, not a single one was completed. But your own camp uh, also made it clear that it was an impossibility, if I recall. Some of the rhetoric that came from but, uh, the minority... So, so, so they were vindicated. Mm. Because if they say you cannot build 88 in one year, even you build five. And let's say, okay, after all, you couldn't build 88, so you have built even five. At the end of the day, the minority was vindicated because we know the kind of people leading us at the moment. Now, he then, after 2020 elections, increased their promise from 88 to 111. And that's how come we have Agenda 111. When we started, and don't forget, the 88 was announced somewhere in April 2020. Take note of that point. The 88 was announced somewhere in April 2020. Now, when the Agenda 11 was announced, the Agenda 11 was moved. You know, all the health infrastructure has always been managed by the Ministry of Health. So they moved the Agenda 11 from the Ministry of Health to the presidency. Why I thought that the due diligence and the feasibility studies will be top notch. Okay, so there are instances where media houses such as Joy FM or Joy News have written to the ministry for information on Agenda 111 and they will write back to tell you that they have no information on Agenda 111 because the Agenda 111 is not in that ministry. You mean you write to the health ministry? Ministry. And the health ministry tells will write you. to you that they have no information on Agenda 111 because it is not in that ministry. I mean, so, you can so quote that your colleague. ministry then So is that is what I'm Overseeing ministry. Okay, so or... now there is no ministry overseeing Agenda 111. They have formed a whole bureaucratic system, a whole secretariat called Agenda 111 secretariat. They are using land cruises and what have you at the presidency, led by the chief of staff. Now I'm taking you back. When this, I mean, Agenda 111 was announced after the secretariat and what have you, they have told you already that there's a unit in the ministry that is responsible for capital investment such as Agenda 111. Okay? Now, they have to go in for a company, a private company, to come and manage Agenda 111. Now, the private company they went for, 
the original name of the private company is Core One Limited. The object Core One, one Limited. Call, like call, phone call, phone call, call one, one limited. limited. Right. Now, the object of call one limited is trading in general goods, imports and export of general goods. Did you hear the object? Mm. And this call one limited was incorporated on the 30th November 2015. Now, immediately the 88th hospital was announced, which was in April, in May, call one metamorphosized to Hospital Infrastructure Group. They had to change their name and amend their object. So within the space of a month. A month. In fact, weeks. It's, it's changed from, changed from imports, one limited, exactly. export of general goods to hospital. So now the, the object changed from trading in general goods, import and export of general goods, to trading in general goods, import and export of general goods, project management, Infrastructure development, construction, rare estate development, and management. In a matter of so day. project management and exactly. all of that sprang Just up. so that they can have the opportunity to manage Agenda 111. There are questions. But, but do we know whether, you say there are questions, and there are, but do you know whether this went through a competitive bidding process? That's also another Do you know whether charade. it was so sourced? What, also, what happened? That is also, you see, we struggle before we even get information with regards to Agenda 111. How David Ajayi, you know, I've heard David Ajayi before, isn't it? He's also here, from Cathedral to Agenda 1-1. He's also, he's also there. And so, the, the David is yes, he's one of the... Agenda 1-1. Agenda 1, 1 So, the procedure, the whole thing, okay, the, the insincerity and the opacity with regards to Agenda 1-1 is just legendary. Just, just give me a fair, uh, because we don't want to denigrate any personalities, Sir David Ajay is in Agenda 111 as what? what as is he doing? one of the architects to design the, um, ho I mean the hospitals. Okay? And even as at the time he was giving that project, there's a contention that he was not an architect in good standing in Ghana. Okay, of course. Every jurisdiction, you have to exactly. go through certain processes. It is not as though he's not an architect. I mean, everybody knows that oh, he has I, an I get it. reputation and all that. A lawyer, a doctor, every Fantastic. year you have to... Fantastic. So there are issues. So even the procurement processes, because they never appeared before the committee. And I'm not going to tell you how we got all this information and all these documents. Now, we had fired a lot of questions that the minister responsible for, finance, uh, uh, for health should come and answer. And they never appeared on the floor of the house. So when we're going to consider the 2023 budget, then I invited the chairman of the committee and the minister responsible for health, that if they want as the minority group to be part of considering the health aspect, the health ministry aspect of the, the, the budget, then they must come and speak to Agenda 111, or else we're not going to be part of it. So they had to appear. So when they were coming, they were led by the chief director of the Jubilee, of, Jubilee House. Okay, now don't forget also that when the president cut sword in the initial stages, they gave us a timeline that they were going to complete this project in a matter of 12 to 18 months. That was the first timeline that came. Now, during the State of the Nation address last year, the president then said that the timeline was too ambitious and so he could only complete in 2025. And let me quote the president. The president said, in the State of the Nation address, we have every intention of seeing this project through to a successful end, which will enable me to commit, me here means the president, which will enable me to commission all 111 hospitals before I leave office on 7th January 2025. This is the president speaking. This is what the president told the people of this country. Now, if a president speaks, it must carry weight. Mm. Won't do haircut. Then the next day, there's haircut. Won't we'll go to IMF. Then the next, the next day, you I know, are I know agenda one 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 in a way is also tied to COVID nineteen. But if you look at the fact, and it will be pointed out to you by this administration, they've had to deal with COVID nineteen. They now have to deal with the Russo Ukrainian war. That will impact our uh, expenditure. That will impact our fortunes as a country. It will impact our GDP. It will impact our productivity levels. Okay, cool. And, I, and I you, think that you are even aware that we've ended up at the doorstep of look, the IMF. We, let's, let's, let's pause here where we are. I'll continue from there about the timelines. But let me address what you have just raised. Okay, cool. 
you are one, you should be one of the people who should never entertain COVID as one of the reasons why we are where we are. I'm only bringing. Yes, I know. I know you are doing some your work. of the matters. Yes, I know. That, I know you are doing your work. And these are some of the things they have been singing. I've pointed it out to you that if you are a president and in your economy, you see, to the extent that COVID was a disease and people died as, as a result of COVID, it's a disaster. I agree. Rakako. With regards to our economy, COVID was a blessing. Mm. COVID was a blessing. And so you can't tell me that after pumping in 21, even let me even go with the... the, the 21.5. Let me, it goes up to about 25 billion. And then you come and tell me that there's financial difficulty as a result of that. They should better tell us where these financial difficulties are coming from. It cannot be COVID. It cannot be COVID. Because COVID gave us more money than any resources in this country per year. More money. How about that Coco give us? Between 1 million to 1.3 billion a year. That's, what, that's how, how much we get from Coco. Mm. So they cannot be reasoned. So that one we should stop saying, let me continue with my argument. It cannot be entertained. And henceforth, with the figures, in fact, you know, the vice president had a different figure. The president himself had a different figure. The minister responsible for uh, finance had a different figure. And that, uh, the auditor general is also coming out with a different figure. But let's even... That's, like, that's, that's just because the auditor general leaves out three key components. We're we'll talking about... There. The Don't national worry. components, Korea, Germany, and other Exactly. Why, why must he which leave? Which were not factored in. Why must he leave? And these are the questions. Mm. We'll come there. So that cannot be the reason. And we should not entertain these things. You see, we are where we are as a result of one incompetence and arrogance combined. That's where we are. Because you see, the could people who are incompetent, but they will listen to people, other people's opinion, suggestions. We can get out of the situation. When President Mahama was advising this president that go to IMF. What didn't they tell him? They insulted him that, that he has no alternative and that they were not going to go to IMF. Now, we went to IMF in an ambulance. Now, we are begging IMF that accept us. And we are where we are. So they cannot tell us that. And when you believe in your own lies and in your own incapability or in your own arrogance, that is where, because we have gone back more than 15, 20 years. Okay? Now, people have their, it was those days in the 80s where I heard that people will have commodities in their shops, and then because of prices, they will come and then sell, auction those things for other people to get the opportunity to buy. But in a democratic dispensation, that you enter into an agreement with government, bonds, the government decides that I am not going to give you your money for how many years. So I will come there. But the point is that, remember, that I told you, the president told us that I've quoted the president, that they were going to deliver these Agenda 111 before 2025. Mm. Now, this is their own document when they appeared before the committee. And this document is titled Ghana Priority Health Infrastructure Project, Agenda 111, Parliament, right. Parliamentary Update. Listen to when the Secretariat told us that they were going to finish this project. Listen, and I'm quoting. An estimated amount of 300 million will be required to support this output, 300 million. And this output is what I'm going to tell you, this. We further project that at the rate of progress, about 20% of district, 20 percent of district hospitals will be fully completed in 2024. 20%. Now, they didn't end there. Completion forecast. Bullet one. 20 percent of hospitals could be completed in 2024. Bullet point two. 20 percent of hospitals could be completed in 2025. Bullet point three, 30 percent of hospitals could be completed by 2027. The last bullet point on this one. 30 percent of hospitals could be completed after 2027. After, we don't even know the date. So the president lied. There's no other way to describe it than lies. It was a clear lie. This is from their own document. So initially, <clears throat> we said that, look, there was not going to be any 111 hospitals. What they have set out to do is to leave a lot of uncompleted sites. So they will, they will do excavation here. They will put blocks there. They will put sand here, as you have seen. So when you ask them, they will say, oh, works are ongoing. But, so, but, but, but really, to what end? That is the point. If, if you say that is the plan, that the is question the plan. is, to what end? That is the plan. Because the president has said something, and he must be seen to be, to be doing something. 
not to be committed to it. Because you see, I, I, we no, need... no, 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 this is a serious allegation. Okay. You're making. Are you suggesting uh -huh. that this administration has thrown dust into the eyes of Ghanaians, claiming they are going to put up, even if they don't complete 111 facilities, mm -hmm. claiming they are going to do this, when in fact, they have absolutely no intention of doing that. Is that what you're purporting? Yes, but you have, as ranking members. Yes, of course. But do I have to say any, uh, anything? I've quoted copiously from their own document, telling you that look, hey, we are not going to do like 111 hospital. They are saying so, and if, they, if, they are if, telling if, you that even the 20 percent, they need 300 million dollars. We don't have that 300 million dollars in our budget. Mm. And don't forget, these projects I have mentioned, the ones that President Mahama undertook. We had what we call dedicated sources of funding, BAMED, NMS, AFDB, and what have you. Where is the dedicated source of funding for the general government? So they are pushing the bed into future governments. So I don't need to be a CSA to tell you that, look, the people are embarking on leaving a lot of uncompleted sites. So there are sites which, I mean, some works are going on, but I'm telling you, take it from me, before elections, They'll be seeking to commission about two or three or five maximum. Then they'll come and tell you with pump and pageantry that they'll come and, oh, agenda one, 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 agenda one. Where in real terms, Master, Master, if you're a president in any serious jurisdiction, common sense, why must you leave projects that are 70% complete, 80% complete, seven years down the lane? You haven't completed that. If you go to uh, Abitifi now, if we are going back to Abitifi to, complete, to continue Abitifi Hospital, we have to demolish more than 70% of the structures there before we can continue. It's not causing financial loss to the state. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Even before we continue on this trajectory, and, and I would like to salute uh, my senior colleague, Samson Lade Anyenene. He just drew my attention to an RTI request uh, the multimedia group put forward um, sometime in 2022, February. Mm -hmm. For the information agenda 111? Yes. Fantastic. To a request for information about government's Fantastic. agenda 111 projects. And pursuant to the act, we were asking for copies of the policy mm -hmm. or policies underpinning the project, detailed project proposals, including feasibility studies and funding sources Fantastic. secured, a list of all the districts where projects would be cited, a detailed plan of commencement and completion of each of the projects, and a detailed plan for staffing and operation of each of the hospitals. It was actually signed by the head of our research desk, Raymond Aqua. Now, in uh, March, actually the 21st of March, 2022, this was the response <laughs> from the Ministry of Health. It says, this is about your letter dated February 11, 2022, on the subject, request for information about government's Agenda 111 projects. Per our records, we do not have the information in our custody. Thank you, signed Kwabna Bwedu Oku Afari, Chief Director for the Minister. It corroborates what uh, you have Look, just I will never uh, set out to lie. With I have me. my integrity on the line. I, have, mm. since I started politics more than 22 years ago when I was about 20 years. I have never come out with anything that later turns out to be false. If anybody has spoken on Agenda 111 and COVID, more than anybody, it's me. I won't lie. Do you understand? We think before we talk. We consult. We go into details. I have waited till today because I have their own records. I have their own documents. That's why I've waited till today. Because when we were pushing them, we knew what was on the ground. But I didn't want to go to do anything and they'll come and then rebut it and say, this is not what we are doing. I needed their own documents. Okay? So we won't lie. Now fast forward. What is hurting at the moment is that Monies have been paid to contractors over one year. And the progress is as you saw on the screen. Mm. I was just looking at the, the, the story to do with the one in Adesso. Okay. Where uh, I think it's $1.3 million or so that was paid to uh, this uh, contractor. Yeah. And work is still yet to commence. Uh, we, we can get some more details, but you go around the country and some of these projects have yes, been given out. Yes. Construction is yet to begin. Money has been doled out. A I year. Think. If you say money has been doled out, if money, you see, I don't have a problem about any project or any site that mobilization has not been paid and they are not on site. I don't have any problem about that. But to give 1.3 million US dollars, to give 1.4 million US dollars, to give 1.2 million US dollars to contractors over a year, 
Kakpo, if I give you one million, one million dollars a year, do you know what you would do with it? Mm. I mean, if you invest that money, and why wouldn't our economy be run aground if this is the way we behave? We've given money to contractors and they are nowhere to be found. We went to Kwabinakwa in the Obwasi East municipality or so. We went to Akrofum, that place they had done some excavation. We went to Adeso. In Medina, we were hunting for the site in Medina. Why, if they had not been giving mobilization, I don't have a problem. So why do you give our money to people and they are not on site? Look, when we set out to investigate how much <coughs> has been pumped into Agenda 111, I can't but listen to it carefully. In the 2021 mid-year review budget, about 600 million Ghana cities was given to utilize Agenda 111. If you go to the 2022 budget... And, and for those watching, just to interject, that was the, the response uh, by the Ministry of Health to the petition that we actually uh, put forth, uh, which is actually below. So the points I raised, we had uh, sent that put forward an RTI request, and this was a response that we got from the health ministry, yeah. which corroborates yes. what you said when yes. you also filed yes. Yes. a similar request. Yes, and so uh, meanwhile, they are supposed to have a unit called Capital Investment Unit mm. that is supposed to manage projects such as that. So let me continue on um, the sources of funding so far. I've already made so, a point. So, so wrap up on that. Let's, let's find a way of concluding on Agenda 111 no so problem. that we can also talk about no COVID-19 experience. No problem. No problem. I will do. So we have pumped not less than 1.8 billion Ghana cities into Agenda 111. 1.8 billion Ghana Billion. Ghana cities. Right. So let's ask ourselves, why are we punishing ourselves like that? If 1.8 billion could even build five, why can't we build five complete and people can use those facilities than what we are seeing at the moment? Why? It is different from when projects have dedicated sources of funding. That's why you know, oh, this is a funds for you. This is, even if government leaves power, you are sure that the project will continue. But that is not the case for Agenda 111. So for me, I think that they have set out, and there are people of contention that, look, some monies have even exchanged hands. They've taken the money behind the scene, and so the contractors don't even have money to go back to site and all that. So I am saying... Are you suggesting there are some kickbacks going on? In fact... Which, which in fact, could also be impeding the contractors from actually of course, doing what they of course. were supposed to Look, do. Let, let me tell you, I'll, I'll disclose it here before I started and pushing for this. The information I gathered was that people had taken money, they've gone back, they've shared it, they have no money to go back to the site, and therefore they've left site of the abandoned site. So I had to go and see for myself. So if you think there's money, go back to site. Go back. And which, yeah, which, which, which people are we talking about? Oh, people in the, the people in general want to come and explain. Because look, <laughs> but, they're but, supposed but, to. But, but that, is, that is a blanket statement you're making. Which well, people? What, what is wrong with blanket? <laughs> 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 when indeed, you have to be more specific. <laughs> when, indeed, the no. when, when indeed you are the one monitoring, you have a whole secretariat, and people, you have given people money for more than one year, and you're not. If, if indeed. You have not gone back to take the money. Why can't you tell the person to come? So you're to blaming the secretary. Of course, you, you are blaming the whole the the, from the from the president because the president said this was a flagship program. So they shouldn't send it to the the ministry. They should bring it to the presidency, where everybody was expecting that at least they would have done due diligence. Okay, this is what we are seeing. Look, there will be because of what we are doing. They will never. Some of them will never leave site too. So when you go to site, you see two or three people on every site pretending to be doing something. So that Akanda will not come there with the pressman and go and say we have abandoned site. But look, we we'll hold their feet to the fire. Because they have destroyed this country. We don't deserve this as a country. We don't. And so as for Agenda 1, we, have not, we are not done yet. We will visit everywhere we need to visit. We will visit everywhere we need to visit to be able to bring out the challenges, the development, and what have you. That mm. is our responsibility. Okay. Uh, so as far as Agenda 111 is concerned, you feel it's not going to see the light of day. But, but at the same time, so obviously the 20% in 2024 or 2025 is not a feasibility for you. For, now, for now, they need about $3.9 billion 
Ghana cities to be able to achieve the 20%. I have not seen that money anywhere in the budget. Why are they going to get the money? Given these critical conditions we find ourselves. You see, because of what some of us are saying and what some of us are doing, they will struggle to put up some. They will, tr they will try in order to prove us wrong. They will do. I know them. When we started talking about one, one district, one factory, then they, they went around commission other private companies to show us that the one district, one factory is ongoing. When we started talking about uh, one village, one dam, they started showing us some dugouts where today they are nowhere to be found. So they will, they will do something, one or two. But I can tell you that, on authority, that there wouldn't be any 111 hospitals before 2025. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. And as a president, when you speak, it must carry weight. Let's, let's reserve the rest of the time, and uh, we'll see whether my director can project some of the <clears throat> COVID-19 vaccine procurement, um, a la the, the data we have now from both the Auditor General's report and the Finance Ministry. But looking at some of those details, <clears throat> in millions of American dollars, you look at how much we paid to UNICEF and Avast over $120 million. We only got the value of about 38.32 with over 81 million outstanding. Then you look at uh, the, the figures, and you were pointing to that. The Auditor General versus the Finance Ministry. The Finance Ministry says in billions of CDs, we got 18.19 billion. The Auditor General says 19.11. And even he leaves out key uh, areas, the contributions of Korea, Germany, and the government of uh, Ghana. So quite a number of dynamics there. And then there is also the procurement of ambulances, uh, COVID-related. And we paid 600000 plus out of some $4 million. The specifications did not come through as expected. And those ambulances have not seen the light of day. You can also talk about the, those facilities, uh, which were supposed to serve as, uh, what's the name of those again? Um, the centers where if you got COVID, uh, you would be and isolation this centers. Yes, this is control centers, yeah. Which also, uh, we are told, some of them are just lying fallow, a lot of money expended. What is, what is the true state of our fight uh, okay. when it comes to so COVID-19 and the facilities? To, to start with, on the 7th of February, 2023, we are going to begin a public hearing on the COVID expenditure, and we are expecting the Minister Responsible for Finance to appear before the committee. So, Honorable Atu Forsen has made a clear announcement to that effect, and so we are going to start our public hearing on that. Akakbo, remember that the Auditor General didn't set out himself to embark on auditing the COVID expenditure. We, in the minority, if you Google um, Akando, on COVID expenditure, you'll get more than 20 stories on that. We realized that they were sharing the COVID funds like roasted granite. Because there's no point that after investing 21 billion in the economy, we should be at where we are. Mm. Now, we filed a motion for probe into the entire expenditure of COVID-19. At that time, we had the first deputy speaker sitting in the chair as speaker. He threw our motion away. In fact, under bizarre circumstances, bizarre circumstances because per our standing orders, if a motion is moved, debated, the speaker has no right to rule on the motion than to vote on the matter. But under this circumstance, the motion was moved, debated, and yet, the speaker ruled and threw away the motion. I didn't know then, as at that time, that parliamentary candidates of MPP were giving money from the COVID money. I didn't know at the time. Which, which era are you referring to? I'm referring to the 2020 elections. I see. Only for a parliamentary candidate somewhere in the north to come and tell us that parliamentary candidates were giving some part of the money from COVID. So I then understood... All parliamentary candidates... Well, it says parliamentary MPP. candidates, whether all or some. I'm just quoting here. So, so which, it which, says parliamentary which candidates. parliament on the MPP side said this? He's not a member of party. He was a candidate. A candidate. A parliamentary candidate. Right. That lady, uh, Sanerugu constituency, 
I see. I mean, it's, it's, it's a public knowledge. The video and the audios have been trending. Mm. I am not I mean, this it. specific bit about saying that COVID-19 money had been given to members of parliament. That, no, that no, is, candidate. That is, he says he has share as the parliamentary candidate. Right. She mentioned that in the audio. And then she continued to say that the share of the constituency executives, the share of the regional executives, we are in the audio. If you have it, you can play it. So it can trickle. It had trickled. I mean, down. if why? why? Parliamentary candidates. I mean, I'm looking at. I mean, some other angles. Unapproved risk allowance, for example. No, no, I'm coming there. I've not, I've not come. I've not come to the, the Auditor General's report yet. Mm. I'm coming. I think we have some time, right? We have some time. We, uh, just we have about five it. minutes. Oh, is that so? Yes. Okay, then, I, then I have to rearrange my this thing. So fast forward. The Auditor General has done some work on this uh, COVID expenditure. So I'm told we but have about this, 10 minutes. So this, you, can, you can make the most of it. <laughs> you are moving here don't, and don't, there. Don't worry. That's OK. But At least that gives you more time to, yes. to expand on. So the, yeah. the, the Auditor General has done some work on the expenditure. But that is just a tip of the iceberg. Because you remember that, that the country director for the World Bank last year said that Ghana had benefited about $903 million, if you recall. If you check the sources of funding that the Auditor General and, and the first table, table one, you realize that he had audited 430 million. So where is the difference? Now, as you mentioned, we had Germany bringing us about 40 million euro. Mm. We have South Korea <clears throat> bringing us 30 million, 30 million, two, 60 million. In fact, there was a grant component in that, you understand? This can be found in the... Um, so, so if I may just give the breakdown, which is one of our slides, mm -hmm. IMF 5.85 billion, mm -hmm. World Bank, and all of these are in CDs. World Bank, 2.58 billion, mm -hmm. European Union, 504 million, African Development Bank, 405.65 million, mm -hmm. Korea, 349 million, mm -hmm. Germany, 280.99 million, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Bank of Ghana, 10 billion, it's on your screen now. Mm -hmm. The government of Ghana, 4.51 billion. Mm -hmm. And the government of Ghana contingency fund, 1.2 billion. In total, you're looking at 25.68 billion Ghana CDs. And, and the source is what you see there, the 2021 media budget review. Fantastic. So if at the end of the day, the other general comes to tell us that he has audited 21.8 billion. The difference. We should be looking for the difference, isn't it? Mm. Now, let me draw your attention to something I found interesting. So, the difference is about 4.6 billion. So, we'll look for it. We'll look for it. Now, if you go to the Auditor General's report, Table 1, total amount mobilized, the Auditor General will tell you that they used about, you know, this, this is 2020 budget support. So, IMF, about 5.5 something billion in Ghana cities. Then AFDB, about 398. So when you add the bit that went into um, budget support, you have about 16.5 billion. In, I'm taking the Auditor General's own report. Right. Okay. Then when you come to page, when you come to page 31 of the Auditor General's report, he says that, out of the 21.8 billion mobilized, about 11.7 was spent on COVID activities. Meanwhile, they had used 16.5 to support budget. Mm. So if you take the 16. We know some of it went into leave, some of it went into budgetary support. Yes, that, I, I'm not disputing so, that fact. So much we'll come, they will go into the details. They will come and tell us the correlation between the fight against COVID and recapitalization of a bank. They'll come and tell us at the committee. They'll come and tell us if you use COVID money for fumigation how fumigation will fight COVID. Those ones will come there. These are the details. They will come and tell us. Okay? We have not come to that end. I'm just using the Auditor General's own report. The Auditor General says that he has audited 21.8 billion. But the Auditor General goes ahead to tell us that out of it, they use about 11.7 billion for COVID activities. And I am saying that if you have used 16.5 billion for budget support. If you take this uh, 16.5 out of the 21, you are not left with 11. So there's inconsistency. 
Right. That's the point I'm making in his own report. So that's why I'm telling you, probably at the committee, the Auditor General must come and speak to his own report. Mm. To probably there are some kind of reasons. Are you suggesting here that you, you're looking forward to inviting the Auditor General? If it becomes necessary, because I'm a member of the committee. Mm. Yes, if it is very necessary, we'll invite him to come and speak to his own report. When you look at on the face of yes. what you're seeing, yes. do you think the Auditor General should be appearing before the health On the face, for me, I'm not the only member on the committee. But, but you, but personally? For me, personally, I think that he must come and speak to it. The other surgeon. Yes, he must come and speak to his own. I mean, so there are a lot of questions. For example, in this country, every constituency has an ambulance, isn't it? True or false? Tell me. True. Very good. So if there is an emergency, and we are using the, uh, the money to fight the emergency, why must we use money on something that we already have? But, but we know that in terms of each such constituency having one ambulance, uh -huh. official ambulance, uh -huh. It does not suffice, does it? But was that, I mean, uh, a need I mean, at the time? No, that... it does not suffice. No, but you see, right? this is, this is um, an emergency situation we are fighting. Mm. Okay? So we don't lack ambulances. We don't lack ambulances. Then you go and pay money. Ambulances that were supposed to be delivered in January 2022. And as I speak to you now, not a single tie of an ambulance has arrived in this country. You were talking about the $120 million dollars um, vaccines. What the Auditor General didn't add was that, as at the time they were paying that money, we had an excess, you see, other countries had come to donate. The Health Minister made mention Fantastic! Of that. And he's also made mention of the fact that we don't even have the storage capacity to keep all of these uh -huh. vaccines and so, in the country. And, and especially so. when we've been getting contributions, donations mm -hmm. from other countries. Uh -huh. it has, and so that is why you must tread cautiously. Work. You must think, if you answer, it's very important, home sense, very important. If you know we don't have the storage facility, and we have more than uh, 5 million doses, which of course some even went, uh, some expired. Why must you go and pay money for more? I mean, even currently we are, we're, we're having a COVID-19 vaccination drive, aren't we? So, so, and all we are talking about was not in 2022, and it's not in 2023. It's 2020 and 2021. So what steps did they put in place to retrieve these monies for us? Mm. Do you recall, and sometimes it's difficult when we have such conversations with you, the media, you don't go back to play. Play my voice, play my videos, read online. Mm. When they used 32 million Ghana cities on meetings in 2021, COVID money, uh, companies can't get better. In fact, we all know that in 2021, COVID has subsided, isn't it? 2021. Meanwhile, they told us, they looked into our eyes in parliament, and told us that in 2021, they used more than 600, 600 million Ghana cities on PPEs. So, so let's do this as we wrap uh, the conversation. What do you want to see done differently? What, as a health committee of parliament, you are ranking member on, the, on that committee, what are you going to push for when parliament is back in session for, for the change that okay. you want so to see? So first and foremost, we are going to start a public hearing. If at the end of the day somebody is found culpable, we must retrieve our money first. Public hearing, but Public hearing. The, the pack, the pack no, no, no. does. The, the, so the, 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 the finance and the health committee, mm -hmm. joint committee, mm -hmm. the finance minister will be the first person to appear. When we finish, mm -hmm. if some money is lost, anybody responsible must cough up that money, in my humble opinion. So you're going to call for accountability? Yes, clear. How about and transparency? Then, Further course, transparency of course, yes. spending. So if somebody must be punished, somebody must be punished. And out of that, we'll come out with recommendations. I cannot sit here and tell you all. Oh, mind you, you've not started the, this, this, that is why I keep raising questions. I'm being very careful and trading cautiously. Do you understand? And so we are not going to leave any stone on 10. I kept telling them they can do anything in any other sector. As far as I am not responsible, but in the health sector, no way. We'll continue to expose them. Let us all do the right thing. And we all go along. I mean, there are genuine issues that have come to the committee and they get our support. There was a time. They came back to us that they are finding it difficult sensitizing the people to take the COVID vaccine. MPP NDs on the committee, we came together, we shut ourselves into the regions, and we went to sensitize the people to go and take the COVID vaccines. Do you understand? But the way and manner these people are spending our monies and behaving, I see there's no tomorrow. 
The country oh. is gone. Oh. The country is gone. We've gone back. The country is gone. As I speak to you now, 2023 is going to be harder than 2022. In fact, two times harder. Take it from me. I said this last year and they were insulting me. Because I sit in parliament. I know the document, the, the, the budget you have brought. Now our, 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 our debt to GDP ratio. Mm -hmm. So we are going to face, going forward, we are going to face more difficult economic challenges. So I don't know. I, do, I just don't know why people are behaving this way. Madagana, what have we done? Is it a crime to entrust power into your hands? Is it a crime? Mm. And when you are, when you are even um, talking about one thing, they'll be doing, I mean, that is even when they'll be doing more. Huh? Why do you need $300 million to complete hospitals and you don't have yet, you are pumping about $400 million to cathedral? Who does that? Who? Tell me, who does that? I mean, the country is for all of us, oh, and some of you. You must be talking, oh. It's not a matter of I'm a neutral person, or I'm a journalist, or I'm, a, I'm in the clergy, so I'm not talking. Now the bonds, the bonds. It's not only NBC members who have their monies in the bonds, oh. The so-called neutrals are there. President Mahama said it. If you are taking a decision in the country and you say you are neutral and you sit on the fence, at the end of the day, the effects will come after you. The consequences, you bear it. We all go into the market to go and buy the, 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 the one bunch of plantain, five cities, as the minister said. We all go into that market and buy it. When you have a, an agric minister whose solution for food security is to sell plantains in the ministry, then clearly you should know that these people have, they have run off of ideas, run out of ideas. They have run, totally run out of ideas. And yet the arrogance with which they display, I mean, it's, 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 and, it's, and, and I suppose that's why some of you are there to hold uh, the authorities. Yeah, we are doing our best. Each arm of government is supposed to be a check on the other. And as parliament, you hold the public purse, you pull the purse strings, and we're counting on all of you members of parliament from both sides, the NDC and the NPP, to do justice to the ordinary people of Ghana. But we're grateful that you took the time to join us this it's morning. It's a privilege to do To this open part. up those chapters, and if you like, verses of what... <laughs> Is happening with Agenda 111 and COVID-19 spending. That was Kwabna Menta Akando, a member of parliament for Jua Boso uh, and a ranking member on parliament's health committee. Now, it, it's been quite a conversation, but stay with us because there's a lot more coming your way. We're talking corruption now. And Ghana, for the third consecutive year, has scored 43 out of a possible 100 points, which would have shown our growth in terms of dealing with corruption. The CPI, the Corruption Perception Index, is our next issue on the chopping block as our big story. Do stay, we'll be right back.